Hi, I'm Mickey Jaco. It's good to know that after Windows 7 and 8, Microsoft is probably going to stick with Windows 10 and only make minor adjustments from this point on. I want to share my experience in getting the latest version of Windows because I think these are the adjustments that the average person will likewise have to make. The full version of Microsoft Office. When I got home, I immediately noticed all kinds of word processing functions were missing page numbering, margin setting, and so on. Turns out I now had only the pared down version of Microsoft Office. I went back to Best Buy and they reinstalled the full version for me, the one I had bought originally. And I was back to normal. So that's my first point. When you get a new version of Windows or get a new computer, make sure you have a full version of Microsoft Office. Now, here are the other adjustments I had to make to get things back to the way I like them. The desktop appearance. For brightness, click Start. Settings icon. System. Display. And move the slide bar to your preference. For screen background, click Start, Settings, Personalization, the drop down arrow here. I prefer a solid color and not a picture, so I picked dark gray, although I decided to go with black this time. Just click on the color and close. I asked the Best Buy person what he uses. Surprise! He said he uses black also. <laughs> I'm not weird. I kind of like the black because it shows the pointer pretty clearly. The desktop icons. I had to get all my desktop items back onto the desktop. I transferred my major files that I had backed up on an external hard drive back to my computer. I set the size of my icons. Right-click an empty spot on the desktop, View, you have the choice of Large, Medium, or Small. I like Small. From the left of my Documents folder, I dragged the This Computer icon to the desktop. contains your major files, what the old libraries folder used to contain. I put my frequently used folders and documents back up by finding them under my documents, right-clicking them, send to, desktop create shortcut. I make it a habit to keep only blue arrow shortcuts on the desktop rather than the actual files so that my actual files always remain in their normal locations. I reinstalled a few programs that in my particular case were no longer there and from the start menu I scroll to these programs that I use a lot and dragged a shortcut for each of them onto the desktop. And I arranged all my shortcuts to my liking. And I put shortcuts onto the desktop for the websites I use most often, like the local weather. I use Google to get the site URL. Copy the URL. Right click an empty spot on the desktop. New.
shortcut, paste it in the URL, next, named it, weather, finish. And here is an icon for that site. Other sites that I use a lot, but not all the time, I keep on my favorites bar. The favorites bar. First, I had to get the favorites bar back. You click the three dots icon at the upper right. Settings near the bottom. Show the favorites bar. On. Close. I used Google to bring up each of my favorite sites and put them onto my favorites bar. Amazon, for example. Click on the star icon, this down arrow, select favorites bar, add, and it puts it up on your favorites bar. You can drag it to the spot you want. You can rename it, right click. press enter or you can reduce its size to just an icon. So this star is for saving a site in a favorites folder. This one shows your favorites folders. Say you don't use a site as much as you used to and want to get it off your favorites bar, but just keep it in a folder. Get the site up. Click this icon. The down arrow. Click on favorites folder at the top. Save. And note how the site disappeared from the bar and is now only in the folder. To move a site back onto the bar, use this icon and just drag it in. These arrows on the left open and close the folders. Display text size. Throughout your computer, there are all kinds of settings and preferences, and I find usually the default settings are fine. That's why they are the default settings. For display text size, click Start, Settings, Ease of Access, Make Text Bigger, Drag the slider to your preference. I like 125. Click Apply and wait a few seconds for it to take hold. I set this lower one to the recommended 125 also. This bottom one applies right away. The only thing I don't like about the 125 size is that the document ribbon takes up a lot of space. But you can click this up arrow here and it disappears. Click one of the tabs up here and it reappears, but smaller. Click this pin icon and it becomes bigger again. I find 125% to be fine for internet page size also. You click on the three dot icon at the far upper right and click plus or minus to get the size you want. Mouse and pointer options. I typed mouse settings into the search box.
additional mouse options over at the right, device settings, settings at the middle right, multi-finger tab at the middle, uncheck enable zooming, OK. That gets rid of the mouse pinch functions that I don't like. I also unchecked enable tapping. I typed pointer into the search box. It's got change mouse pointer size. Clicked on that. It gives small, medium, and large. I like large. It gives white, black, and reverse. I like reverse. I picked a cursor thickness. Note how thin the cursor is next to the A here. If you drag the slider bar to the right, you get a thicker cursor. I like the thickness at 3. Pasting options. When you paste something into a document text, a small box pops up which gives you options on how the pasted in material is affected. Click on the drop down arrow and click here to keep your source formatting or here to merge the material into the target formatting. If you want it to do the same thing every time, you click on Set Default Paste and make selections under Cut, Copy, and Paste. The one I changed was Pasting from Other Programs. I like to have text I copy from the internet adopt the formatting of my target document. Click OK. Now, internet text that I paste in automatically changes into my target document formatting. This small paste options box disappears as soon as you hit your next keystroke, but I find it very annoying. <laughs> so I clicked File, Options, Proofing, Advanced, and that brings you to the same cut, copy, and paste options. I unchecked Show Paste Options button when content is pasted. OK. Now it doesn't pop up anymore. Home page setting. Say you like your browser to open up to your email or the weather. For Microsoft Edge, copy the URL. Click the three dots icon, settings at bottom, open Microsoft Edge with a specific page or pages, paste in the URL in this spot here, and click the small save icon here. Now your browser automatically opens up to the weather. Word Shortcuts. Click File at upper left. Options at the bottom. Proofing at upper left. Auto Correct Options. Type in a unique logical abbreviation on the left, the full word on the right. Add. OK. Now every time you type in the abbreviation, it automatically jumps to the full word. Symbol shortcuts. Click Insert Tab. Symbol drop-down arrow. Symbol. More symbols. Find the symbol you want and highlight it.
Shortcut key. Under Press New Shortcut key, type in your shortcut. For example, Control and Slash for the checkmark symbol. Assign. Close. Now when you press Control plus Slash, you get a checkmark. Things change and people have different setups, but I hope at least some of this material has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching.